say sayonara to poker for a couple weeks. Hey guys, I'm Chuck, and those are my Charlie cards. And these right here, these are my fancy Charlie chips. In the town I live in, we have a happy face mode right into the side of a hill. That's why this is Happy Face Hold'em. The goal, log 500 hours, a 2-3 no limit hold'em, and have more Charlie chips at the end of the session than we started with. Let's get into the action. All right, what up guys? It is Saturday the 28th. So yesterday's session uh, was a long one. It was like, I don't know, 10 or 12 hours in the game for seven was down I don't know 520 at one point maybe maybe 600 anyways I'll show you the big hand there that uh, you know help help bring it back down on the session $99 so at the end of the day not a bad loss but uh, played a lot longer than I wanted to for a horrible result so we got the news last night that come Monday, everything's closed again in LA for three weeks. So that's it, no more poker. So we're gonna uh, run it up today, play another session, uh, see if we can't run it up big in a few hours and uh, say sayonara to poker for a couple weeks. We're headed out to the uh, Talking Stick in Phoenix, Arizona area, Mesa, Chandler area, uh, the week of December 7th. So looking forward to getting a session or two in there. My wife and I are looking to exit California like so many others. So we're going out there to buy a place and then uh, probably move in a few years. We got things holding us in California right now. But uh, when that's, but when we have the chance to go, we will. So anyways, it's kind of bouncy out here as I walk into the bike. Anyways, guys, thanks for being here. Let's go review some hands. All right, here's where you walk in through the parking lot. You got to get your temperature check, show your ID or player's card, and get your wristband before you enter the playroom. All right, we're going to sit down at the 2 3 table with one buy in $300, and we look down at Jack 8 suited from the button. We're going to raise this up to 15 with just a few limpers before us. And we're going to get a couple calls. So going three ways to a flop, which comes down queen, five, jack with two clubs on the board. Pretty connected, wet board here. We have straight draws, flush draws. We only have middle pair with a pretty weak kicker. But when the action checks around to us, we're going to throw out a bet and try to take it down right now. And of course that doesn't work and both call. I think a check would have been okay here for pot control. We have some showdown value. But the turn comes down the six of clubs, completing the front door flush draw. The action is going to check all the way around. So I'm thinking my jack might be good here if we didn't hear from anybody on this turn. So going to the river comes down the jack of hearts. We like that. We have trips now, but we still have to worry about a flush draw, a potential full house, but that's unlikely as this has been a very passively played hand so when the action checks around to me i do assemble a bet for 50 try to get some value out of here first player is going to fold and the next player is going to tank for just a little bit before reluctantly putting in the call and we're good we're going to take this one down and of course one of our favorite things to do is stack up those charlie chips all right let's move on to the next hand all right and this one's sitting with suited connectors from the hijack i had opened 15 pre-flop gotten three callers 60 to the flop i continue on this ace six king two heart flop for 20 and get two callers when the turn comes down 10 of diamonds i realize i should have checked and not bet into three other people on the flop so the action checks around on the turn live and learn river comes down the queen of hearts i have two options here either barrel because it's a scary card bringing in the front door flush or check my option which i do which then makes the button lead out with a large bet, which I'm going to fold to. So what do you think here? Do you barrel the scary flush card on the river, or do you give one of the two players credit for staying in the hand, chasing the flush, and getting there? Let me know in the comments. All right, and this one we look down at Jack 8 suited 
from middle position. We'd open the action up $15, gotten two callers and the blinds fold out. Flop comes down 10 queen four rainbow. When the action checks around to me, I can represent the queen or a set of tens or even ace 10, ace queen, king queen, queen jack. So I think it's safe to fire out for half pot right here. So $25 goes in. We get one caller and then the gentleman to my right, he's an OMC. He decides to raise it up to 125. He puts $100 on top and I am going to get out of the way of this one. Now, interesting as we watch this hand play out here, the other caller does tank call this flop. So the turn comes down the two of clubs and the player that tank called on the flop he ultimately decides he's going to jam his stack. It looks like he's got about $75, $85 left behind. So the gentleman, the OMC to the right here, he definitely makes the call. And we go see the river card, which comes down the Jack of Diamonds. And the OMC shows Queen 10 flopping two pair. He's really building up stacks. All right, in this one, we're under the gun two with Jack 10 of Diamonds. We open it up to 15, and by the time the action completes, we're going to go five ways to a flop with 75 in the pot. Fairly light open from early position, uh, probably a fold in most cases, but hey, what the heck. Let's see what we can do. Flop comes down, queen, jack, nine, rainbow. I'm open-ended with middle pair. When the action checks around to me, I put in a bet for $25. Now, this is where this hand gets very, very interesting. We have a player down there at the end of the table that shoves his stack in, and it looks like it's about 65 more to go. The next player in the white shirt immediately following him decides to rip his whole stack in for about 225. While we wait for the next two players to deliberate what they're going to do, they do eventually fold, which brings the action to me. So open-ended, middle pair, backdoor flush draw. If I'm up against two pair, I might win here, four to one on my money. If I'm up against a set, I'm a dog. And I have to think about this carefully. Now, if I'm up against an already made straight, I'm a real big dog. So what do you do in this situation? Now, I guess there's always a chance that I'm up against top pair and, and two overs. In that case, I need about three to one on my money. Well, I was only getting about two and a half to one on my money. So after all that thinking and deliberation, I do ultimately decide to lay this down. I asked my poker buddies what they thought, and they agree the fold was good. And then one of them tells me we had a damn earthquake. God, I can't wait to get out of California. You just never know with this state. Close everything down. Shake us up. Oh, well. Can't wait for 2021 to come. A lot more of the session just kind of went on with raise preflop, continuation bet, after I miss, fold, a lot of that. So we were down on the night. I'll get to the details in a minute. So in this one, we're on the small blind, and we look down at king, queen of spades. We like these suited big cards. So when the flop comes down, 10, 6, 3, monochrome in our favor, we check our option. The player in the blue mask next to the dealer over there, he decides to jam his whole stack. And that's why I checked. He was a pretty action player, putting his money in all night and not having any luck. So I roll over my flush. Should be an easy run out. No big deal. Board pairs. Ten of diamonds. Board pairs again. Three of clubs. Yep, this is how I run. But we got lucky in this one. We're going to stack up some Charlie chips. Whew, that was a close one. And we're going to move on and look at the next hand. All right, in this one, we're on the button. We love our position. We have a suited one gapper, eight, six of spades. So when there's no action leading up to us, we decide to raise it up to $15, our standard open, especially on the button. We get both blinds that make the call. Under the gun makes the call. And we're going to go four ways to a flop with $60 in the pot. And the flop comes down. Nine, nine, king. Wow, what a connected board. You know, typically when you have a paired board like this, it's okay to continue, and oftentimes, especially with a king on the board, you can take the pot down. So I size up just a little bit to 45, just repping a king or maybe queen's jacks, and that doesn't do the job. We not only get one collar, but we get a collar, and we get a tank jam. All right, I'm out of here. Not sure uh, what they had at the end of this hand, but the lady to my left ended up taking that pot down. 
All right, moving on to this one. Ace, Jack of Spades. The spades are running hot tonight. I had raised it up pre-flop from the hijack, and we had a couple callers come along. So we're going to go three ways to a flop with 45 in. And the flop does us pretty good on this one. It comes down Ace, Jack, Nine with two diamonds. Top two. Not a bad way to flop. Finally, we connect with something. All right. So I will always continue when I miss... Well, not always, but generally, when I've been the pre-flop aggressor. So I'm going to go ahead and represent that I missed again. And it doesn't work. They all fold. So we stack up a few Charlie chips, and we move on to the next hand. Sitting on the button with Ace-10 offsuit, we open for our standard 15. Eh, mediocre hand, but playable, especially in position on the button. I likely wouldn't play it anywhere else. And the flop comes down King of Hearts. 8-9, both diamonds, so with two diamonds, flush draw, straight draw, I'm going to continue with my one over and my back door straight draw, I guess. We get a caller, and the turn comes down, seven of hearts, so we pick up some equity here, so we're going to continue, we're now open-ended, so we put out a bet of about 35, and he takes just a minute to confirm the bet before he elects to make the call. So at this point, I have to put him on a king or two pair, maybe a pocket pair. Unlikely he has aces, but he's definitely connected with his board. Maybe a diamond draw. So the river totally misses us. We brick out five of spades, and he decides to put in the rest of his stack, about $100 into this 135 pot. So when a passive player elects to want to put money in the pot, I usually just get out of the way. So we were down on the session $600, not the way we wanted to go out the night the casinos close. So what do you do? What does your wife do for you? She takes you to Main Street Ventura. What a beautiful little town. This is where she grew up. We had lunch out on Main Street. All these restaurants have been closed for indoor dining, so they've moved their whole operations out on the street. If you get a chance to get up to Ventura, what a beautiful town. The weather's always nice, the food is good, beach and pier nearby, I highly suggest it. This is where my home card room is. Alright guys, we'll see you next time from the Talking Stick in Arizona.